Hello, and welcome to the presentation on the Baylor Business Fellows major inside the Hankamer School of Business. My name is Dr. Alan Seward. I am the director of the program and a faculty member in the finance department. The purpose of this presentation is to give you an idea of what Baylor Business Fellows is because it is different than other majors at the university. It also includes some information on how one applies and what the criteria is for selection. I hope you enjoy the presentation. Business Fellows is actually a major inside the School of Business. It leads to the Bachelor of Business Administration degree. Um, there are a lot of degrees offered in a university. Bachelor of Arts, Bachelor of Science, Bachelor of Business Administration are three of the larger ones but there are smaller, more specialty programs, Bachelor of Fine Arts, Bachelor of Music, Bachelor of Science and Education. Um, and each of those titles for the degree tells you something about the degree. A Bachelor of Science degree, for example, will have about a third of the coursework in science and mathematics and about a third of the coursework in your major. So if you get a Bachelor of Science in a math or science discipline, about two thirds of your courses are in that area. If you get um, a Bachelor of Business Administration, about half your coursework is outside the business school and about half of it is inside the business school. As you'll see in a moment, fellows are an exception to that general rule. Bachelor of Arts is the one of the oldest and the least informative degrees. It is a little bit of this broad-based education, so you get things scattered all the way around, and it tells you the least among uh, just the degree title itself. When someone from Business Fellows graduates from Baylor University, their diploma says Baylor University, their name, and Bachelor of Business Administration. It does not list majors or minors or things like that. Those are on your transcript, and they show up in places where you submit a transcript. First job out of school, maybe second job, uh, applications to graduate school will be places where you normally have transcripts submitted. It's also true that you'll put your majors on your resume until your work experience um, begins to dominate anything that you've done in college. Fellows will have a different structure to the Bachelor of Business Administration than other students. We do have to have half of our courses outside the business school, just as you do in business, but the difference is the half for a normal BBA student has what are called distribution requirements. You have to have three English, two history, two math, two science, two social science, two fine arts, a list like that. For fellows, the list is two religion classes and calculus one. Everything else outside the business school is an elective, which allows people and fellows to easily structure one or two majors outside the business school without changing the number of courses that they take or having to go to summers or take overloads in order to graduate in time. That's the true advantage of being in fellows, the ability to have majors outside of the business school as well as inside without adding to the load. One of the places that works particularly well is with pre-med. We'll talk about this later, but about a fourth of fellows are pre-med. And this is one way in which you can take the 57 hours that are normally done in science and mathematics to pre prepare for med school and not have it take any of your electives away or extra hours. It allows you then to do the fellows component and you get to do the uh, other choices with some additional hours that allow you to complete some majors and minors that go along with that. We take about 60 students a year. In this particular case, we currently have 265 students and fellows. So you can see we've drifted a little bit above the 60 students a year. The basic hours that break down, fellows have to have 31 hours inside the business school. There are some requirements on those courses. One has to be in accounting, one economics, one finance, and so forth. But even within those, there are choices. You know, if you have to take a marketing course, not all fellows take the same marketing course. It depends on what you're doing with your majors and what your goals are for when you graduate and the next thing that comes in life. Uh, outside the business school, there's uh, typically 64 hours. It can be a little less depending on where you start with mathematics and if you choose a foreign language. Um, but that's the place where there's not a lot of restrictions on what those courses are. 
And then that will leave you somewhere between 29 and 40 hours in order to get your undergraduate degree. Those hours can be anywhere. They can be inside the business school, completing additional majors in business. They can be outside the business school, completing additional majors or minors outside of the business school. Unlike high school, college requires 124 hours to graduate, not a number of courses. Some courses are one hour credit, some two, some three, some four. Most of them are three hour credits. What you're going to take is some combination of those hours of credit that add up to 124 hours. Generally, I like to think of that as taking about 40 courses, meaning three hours each, and that's a rough approximation uh, of how it will turn out. One hour courses are things like PE. Uh, four hour courses are laboratory science courses. There are some uh, two hour fine arts kinds of courses that have been in there as well. In addition to the hours that it takes to graduate, fellows do have to reach a level four requirement. In one of the areas listed on this slide, you have to reach the fourth semester of proficiency. That might be done by the time you get here. We have fellows that routinely come to Baylor and place into Spanish five or French six or German five, and they've already completed the four courses of credit, and we're fine with that. It could be that you have um, AP credit for uh, bio, or, I'm sorry, you have AP credit for Calculus 1 and Calculus 2. And so then you would just take two more courses at the appropriate level and you would finish level four requirement in mathematics. You may come in with AP credit for two semesters of biology and two semesters of chemistry that are at the appropriate level for pre-med or for majors. And in that case, you will have completed that requirement in science even before you enter Baylor University. A lot of fellows complete the level four requirement in three or four different areas. That's not a hard thing to do. Every fellow will complete it though in at least one. There's also a capstone experience. When fellows was created, the capstone experience was writing a thesis. And one of the things that happened is fellows grew more rapidly into a larger number than we thought it would. Um, it began to strain our resources. We have faculty members who have a lot of things to do uh, besides supervising theses. And there's a certain number that are willing and happy uh, to supervise theses, well-skilled at it, very good mentors. Uh, but as fellows grew, we got to the point where we would strain the capacity of those faculty members. So we began to look for one of two solutions. One, cap the size of fellows, make it small enough that we could all write theses, or two, find some other experiences that replicate thesis, um, but don't necessarily require that one-on-one -on -one faculty involvement. So there's a list of experiences that have met our criteria so far. It is not an exclusive enclosed list. As other experiences develop, as even you as a student at Baylor may find opportunities that will allow you to look at a problem in depth, that will require you to apply information that you have learned and techniques you have learned from a wide variety of classes, and they will have external validation of the quality of your research and your work. And if so, you can actually petition to have that count as your capstone experience. For the current fellows freshman class, um, you can look at the statistics kind of in the middle column there. The one on the left has the historical statistics. And if you compare them, the first number that really stands out is that the SAT has really jumped. And you would think maybe it's getting harder to get into fellows. And it probably is a little harder than it was, but that jump in the SAT is a little bit deceptive. Two years ago, they restructured the SAT. The new SAT is scored on a different scale. And a 1410 on the old SAT is approximately a 1470 on the new SAT. Um, on the right, you have the number of students that are there. You can see the freshman class is really quite a bit larger than uh, we would normally look for. The last graduating class, last May, uh, this is kind of a breakdown. You can see 7.5% of the students graduated with five majors. It is possible to graduate with five majors from fellows, not go to summer school, although you will in some semesters probably take more than 18 hours. More on that in a moment. 17% of fellows graduated with four majors, 45% graduated three majors. The most common outcome for fellows is to graduate with three majors and two minors. And that can be done in the eight semesters that we have allocated 
for this particular major. If you look at the last column, fellows are an interesting group. They're, they're high ability, they're overachievers, they compete on different bases. The current record is of one fellow graduated with 233 hours. Recall that it only takes 124 to get a degree from Baylor. This is a student who came in with a fair number, about 60 hours of AP credit, but he also tended to take uh, somewhere in between, between 22 and 25 hours a semester. Um, that is permitted, but it's not encouraged or required. The majority of fellows never take more than 18 hours in one semester, and all fellows are required to take at least 15 every semester. So most fall in a number that's quite a bit less than 233 hours when they graduate. Uh, nonetheless, if you have that capacity, we can accommodate that for you. The next slide shows a variety of majors of uh, just a group of fellows that graduated. The ones highlighted in gold are two fellows that graduated with five majors. The one toward the middle of the slide is the one that I enjoy the most, in part because two of the majors were German and history, which have nothing to do with business. And that's perfectly acceptable. That's even preferred. I like the notion that you're well-rounded, that you have depth in a wide number of areas, both inside and outside the business school. But you'll also have people that have multiple majors inside the business school. Fellows is one of the majors, BBF, Baylor Business Fellows. And you'll see things where people will have, like the second person there, fellows, accounting, economics, and finance are all inside the business school. Mathematics was the only major that that student had outside the business school. So you can see some of the combinations. Um, we're open to majors outside the business school that are approved as secondary majors. And there's about 40 some, I don't know, 45 of them maybe, at this point in time that have been approved. The majority of secondary majors were approved because fellows asked for it. Individual fellows who wanted to major in an area would go to the department and ask them to go through the approval process for secondary majors. And that's been a large motivation for how that happens at Baylor. The last two years, if we look at where the people went when they graduated, the largest category was people going into finance and banking. That's the large gray um, column on the left. The large gray column on the right is the 25% or so of the fellows that go into uh, medical school. Um, and in medical school, we include actually the pre-health categories. So medical, uh, dental, physician assistant, physical therapy. Uh, we've had two students go into veterinary medicine. Um, so in that kind of category. Uh, back to the left, the orange category is consulting, which we have a lot of fellows go into, and then accounting, very solid major with a good career path, well-defined. The gold column on the far right is other. We have fellows that do all kinds of things that don't fit categories. They start their own businesses. They go to work for Teach for America or the Peace Corps. Um, so we'll have people that do kind of unusual things Significant number of people do that, but they don't all fall into each of their own categories. For students that have gone to law, medical, and graduate school, you can see the basic breakdown there. I would say medical school has a bias toward Texas. If you're from Texas, it is much less expensive to go to medical school in Texas than to go out of state. So most medical students end up going back to their home state. And the ones who don't have attended, for in the case of fellows, have tended to go to the Northeast, a lot of good schools in uh, New York in particular. For PhD programs, you get a little bit more spread. It's Texas, East Coast, and West Coast. For law schools, again, a little bit of a Texas bias, but at East Coast, West Coast, um, if you look at the quality of schools, you kind of see between California, the areas around uh, sort of where you capture Yale and Connecticut and Harvard, and then we also go back to um, the, the Chicago area, we've got quite a few um, good schools um, around that area for law schools. Some students wonder if you're doing this much academically, can you be involved in the university in good ways? And the answer is yes. Here's just a sampling of things that students have been involved with. You can read it in some detail, but I would point out three things that take incredible amounts of time that fellows have been able to do and still maintain the, the work schedule. Um, since the inception of fellows, one half of the student body presidents at Baylor have been business fellows. Uh, student body president, very time consuming role for the year that you serve as president. Baylor is governed by a board of regents. About eight years ago, they decided to have a student regent position 
on the board. Since that point in time, half of the student regents have been Baylor Business Fellows. Um, the third thing that I would point out is in Greek life, that can be very time consuming. Uh, a big function at Baylor is to have something, participate in all university sing. It's very heavy time commitment. And it turns out that last year, six different organizations that had SING presentations, the SING chair was a business fellow. So people that are familiar with Baylor will talk to you about, talk to you about that time commitment, but it can be quite serious. But it is something you can do while still being involved in the academic side without sacrificing academics. Two of the student regents have been pre-med. Uh, three of the SING chairs were pre-med. And there's some serious time commitment that goes with that. Med schools don't give you slack in your schedule because you've got some involvement. They appreciate the involvement, but you still have to keep the academics going. So fellows are a group of people that basically fall into that category. They can handle the academics and they can still be engaged in the community that is the university, as well as being involved with family, home communities, uh, local church, and then just normal social relationships. Fellows have currently studied abroad in over 24 countries. Um, and you see them listed there, heavy emphasis on Europe. Um, a lot of disruption to study abroad this semester. We had fellows who were studying abroad that were able to get back home successfully. We are curious about when they cut down air travel or shut off travel from some areas of the world, but everybody made it back. Um, and you can see that kind of a focus. But if you look at the next slide, which is where people have been on mission trips, you see less of Europe and more of Africa and Central and South America. Uh, but 25 uh, foreign countries that fellows have been to in mission trips. Um, and we're open to that pattern continuing. How do you apply to fellows? Uh, you go online and there's the web address that's there. You're going to submit your scores, which have probably already been submitted to Baylor. You're going to write an essay, why I want to be in fellows. And the real purpose of the essay is since fellows don't have a checklist of distribution requirements to take. When we begin to advise you the first time, I want to know something about what it is that you aspire to do. You want to be in fellows because it allows you to study history and drama, then that allows us to advise for courses in the initial semesters. Later on, it becomes easier as you begin to sort out as to what your real majors are going to be. And so it's less of an issue, but at the front end, it's a significant issue and the essay helps us in that regard. You submit a resume so I can see what your passions are and what you've done besides just academics. You submit a picture. If we've met, I have very good face retention. I do not have good name retention. So the picture helps me identify who you are. Unfortunately, this is a virtual um, spring premiere and so I won't be seeing any of you in, in person, but the picture will still help. You'll submit a high school transcript and though it's not on the slide, you'll also have two letters of recommendation. You generally need that for admission to Baylor and we can use those letters if you want us to. Some students actually ask for different letters of recommendation from faculty because there are different characteristics that they want to highlight. After you graduate from fellows, you can go to graduate school. Here's a listing of the law programs, PhD programs and medical schools. You can pause and look at it as much as you want to. Um, there are additional graduate schools on the following slide. And then about half of fellows don't go directly to graduate school, but enter the job market. And so here's kind of categorical breakdown of where students have gone in terms of jobs. Um, and then another slide. And again, you can slow down and read through those um, as you wish. So that's the basic overview of fellows. Um, and I hope that you enjoyed it. There's one more thing that I would like to add. You are all at a stage of trying to choose where you're going to go to college. And I think that's a wonderful decision process. The normal process, having talked to thousands of students, is you do something like this. You develop a criteria of what it is that you would like to do when you're in college. Where you'd like to go depends on a school that's not too close and not too far from home. It's a school where climate or geography or politics matter to you. It's a school that you'll pick on the excellence of its program or its academic reputation. You may be influenced by social life or athletics. Uh, you may be influenced by the religious climate of the school. Whatever the criteria is, you've got this list that develops and you begin to narrow down your schools 
and you get down to this final list of schools. Okay, these are, are your last, whether it's two or it's 20. Um, and I've had students in both those categories. And then the normal practice is that you would go visit the schools. Because what I'm going to tell you is the last decision is not rational. The last decision is emotional. You will, if you've rationally narrowed it down, you're going to make a choice between good schools for you to attend. But emotionally, is it a school where you're going to be happy to live for the next four years? Are you going to be happy to call that school your alma mater for the rest of your life? Those decisions are an emotional feel. There are very important issues that you can't quantify. You don't know what major you're going to have. You don't know who your classmates are going to be. For about half of the students that go through Baylor, they actually find the person that they marry. If we could advertise who you're going to marry if you came here, we would definitely do that. That would influence your decision in good ways. We cannot possibly know that. So what you're going to do is emotionally say, this is a place where I would be happy being. And know that the last decision is emotional, so don't try to make it rational. I hope that you have a chance to come and visit Baylor. It's a remarkable place. It's a wonderful campus. The people are kind and compassionate, and the faculty are caring and gifted and talented. It's a wonderful place for education, and I'd be delighted if you would choose to come here. But wherever you go, may your choice be well, and may your decision be blessed. Thank you.